first of all, uh, welcome to this discussion on the on the Sherpa project. Uh, so we are joined by um, Karen Melker, you're um, a Danish member of the European Parliament from the Renew Group, and uh, you have um, some uh, extensive um, experience with um, artificial intelligence, digital technology, and I'm sure a lot of uh, interesting insight on the role of um, Essex and how, how it plays into that. So um, I'll just give uh, the floor over to you, uh, Bernd, if you want to introduce the Sherpa project a little bit. Okay, thank you very much, Marianne. So my name is Bernd Stahl. I'm a professor at De Montfort University, which is in Leicester in the UK, and I'm the coordinator of the Sherpa project. Sherpa stands for Shaping the Ethical Dimensions of Information Technology, a European Perspective, and we are a European Union Horizon 2020 funded research project that's been running for about two and a half years now. Um, and we have developed a set of recommendations around how ethical issues and human rights aspects of AI and big data can be addressed. Now, I'm delighted that we have Karen here with us uh, as a member of European Parliament, somebody who actually has the possibility to make change, to make a difference. And uh, I'm delighted that we'll be able to discuss um, the principal way of ad uh, addressing ethics and human rights in AI, and in particular also some of our Sherpa recommendations. So my first question to you, Karen, uh, would be, could you give us a little bit of a, a background a, a walkthrough about your work and your interest in policy of AI? I am a member of the Equality Committee uh, within the Parliament that is looking especially at gender equality, but also other forms of gender and sexual discrimination. And then I'm also in the legal committee uh, called Yuri, which deals with the ethical aspects of new technology broadly. So there we've been working on the use of AI, for example, in regards to state authorities, but also um, looking at liability questions um, for AI and how a liability should be regulated. I think it's really important that we from the European Parliament look at AI as it is and also seeing it as in some aspects advanced form of statistics or mathematics. It is not something magical. It is something that we know already. It is also computer code. And therefore we don't need to have bring in like a sledgehammer of regulation to regulate AI, but we can use some of the forms of regulation that we already have. And then we have uh, issues of what data the AI is trained on, whether the data sets are complete, whether there is transparency on the data sets, which are really important if we're looking at issues of discrimination and unequal treatment, both of consumers and of citizens. And I think that's really important that we regulate sort of the data aspects and the transparency aspects of AI. And then we're looking at regulating uh, high risk AI, where I think it's important to not only define uh, high risk sectors, you could say that the health sector is a high risk area, but certain uses of AI or what is being called AI is not necessarily high risk, even though that it is in the health sector. So therefore I think it's really important that we don't get too overwhelmed with buzzwords and, but actually look at what we need to regulate and where we can use existing regulation or we don't have to regulate. Thank you. You've actually already answered my next two questions right there. Uh, but maybe if, you, if I could ask you to elaborate a little bit on uh, an example of what are the things uh, that people, that consumers, that citizens might uh, want or need to be concerned about. I think the... Um, it's not so much about the technology, but the interaction between those of us using the technology and consumers and citizens uh, that we need to be concerned about. Uh, you, uh, as a project is based in the UK, you probably know um, the, the scene in one of the TV shows where there is a lady sitting at the desk and she says, computer says no. Mm -hmm. And I think um, when we're using artificial intelligence, we need to make sure that the people administering and also applying the decisions or the recommendations made by artificial intelligence have the competence and also the trust from employers and institutions to override decisions made or recommendations made by artificial intelligence. The human in the loop aspect really needs to be effective and competent and trusted enough to actually make decisions that override it. And then I think it's also important that we have 
larger transparency about what the AI is, is doing and the data that it's based on. Um, you are probably also aware of the quite popular uh, book called Invisible Women, which is looking at the lack of data and the lack of research being done on women. Even though it's not really a minority in society, then products are not developed for, data is not included on. And we've seen a lot of examples on AI not um, being able to recognize um, humans with dark skin, um, not including, uh, not recognizing female voices. And I mean, these are aspects that I find uh, undermine the trust in consumers and citizens. Thank you very much. Uh, so one of the recommendations that we've come up with, and that's very widely uh, already perceived and, and also uh, promoted by others, is that there needs to be a better understanding, there needs to be better training, educational pathways to make sure that ethics and human rights are integrated into AI. Um, so my first question in that re regard would be, do you agree with that? Uh, and if so, why do you think this might be a good idea? Or what are the limitations of education and training? I think both in AI, but also in sciences such as physics and computer development and, and coding, we need to have a greater training of um, ethics, um, taking some of the skills that we usually train people in, in the humanities part of education and make sure that the sort of the STEM um, fields also have this. Um, we need to sort of put the arts and humanities in here because when we're developing technology that is able to change the way that our society is organized, we really need to think about it before we unleash it onto society. And sometimes um, uh, technology and especially platforms at the moment have been been developed and started and then this slogan of uh, you um, move fast and break things. I think we need to move away from this and having a greater training and understanding of ethics uh, would help to stop that development. Okay, so you've suggested in integrating humanities um, into what I would assume is probably a university level curriculum. Um, so what else do you think or where would uh, at what stage of the education so what age uh, and in what direction so which disciplines do you think this would be most appropriate and most important i think it needs to be not a subject on its own but it needs to be a consideration of when you are learning about the use of computers it, when you're learning in at a school level but also at a levels uh, if you are looking at technology, then you also need to look at what the effects of technology on society are and what the consequences will be of the technology that you're developing. So I think it needs to go alongside the greater understanding that we all need of technology, coding, computers, uh, the internet at large. Um, we need to have a greater understanding uh, there, all of us. Okay. Or also when we're looking at issues such as media literacy, I think we need a greater understanding of the implications of communicating online and through networks has uh, that is different than writing a book or publishing a newspaper. Okay, uh, so what do you think the role of industry will be in this? I mean, we, we know that a lot of the technologies are built by companies, uh, they're promoted by companies, companies profit from them. Um, so, so in, in the context of education around ethics and AI, where do you think industry sits? I think they, they sit as the, the employer and the, the, um, of the, the people that have been through this education. And I think they need to, to make sure that they consider these aspects uh, when they develop their products. And I think that there is um, a tendency of more and more parts of the industry looking at the ethical and societal aspects of their technology that's being developed. And I think it's, it's really important that we don't see industry and education and innovation as separate uh, parts, but that we remember that they're joined together because we do not have education just for the sake of education, but actually for the sake of using that education in the world 
and that is in part an industry. Okay. Thank you very much.